This is FBC News, I'm Jackie Spate. In this bulletin, 800 communities in Fiji have been identified as those which are being affected by climate change. TLTB clarifies issues surrounding lease money payments. And football star Roy Krishna arrives to join the national squad. Eight hundred communities in Fiji have been identified to be affected by climate change disaster. This has been confirmed following an extensive mapping and profiling exercise conducted by the Climate Change Division under the Foreign Affairs Ministry. Akusita Tale reports a two-day workshop is being held in Suva to help affected communities and partners to develop a relocation guideline. More communities in Fiji are facing the effects of climate change disaster. The recent increase from 600 to 800 shows climate change is real and is affecting Fijian communities. We have been able to map 800 communities. Of those communities already mapped, 45 have been identified as vulnerable with the potential to be relocated in the next 5 to 10 years. So far, we have relocated three communities. The three communities are in Vunindongoloa in Vanualevu, Narikoso village in Kandavu, and Denimanu village on Yandua Island in Boa. The next relocation project will be Wadiwadi District School in Lakembalau. Narikoso village, which has around 109 residents, will soon have 30 families relocate to at least two kilometers inland from the current location. This workshop will help them learn more about relocation. The villages in Wundonglo have already been located, but we hope that through this workshop we will be able to find some of the weaknesses that were found while Wundonglo was relocated. We make sure we learn from it to prepare us for our own relocation. 30 families from Wundonglo had to leave behind their history and place of origin as they were forced to move about two kilometers inland to the new home. We were really affected by the climate change, especially the rising sea level and the damages caused by flooding, since our village is located beside the sea and a big river beside our village. These two were like an army we had to battle with every day. The ministry is conducting a workshop where participants are looking at national guidelines to relocate communities as a result of the impact of climate change disaster. Akusita Talei, FBC News. The current cold weather and dry spell is not unusual for this time of the year. Over the past two months, inland temperatures have fallen be below sorry, 16 degrees Celsius and 18 degrees Celsius in some centers. Ellen Stalls has the story. Fiji Meteorological Services Director Ravin Kumar says this weather is typical of the dry season. The, the temperatures are cooler than what we normally see that in the months of November to February. And then when we see from May to August, September, the temperatures are normally much more cooler. So uh, this is what uh, we, when we say it's normal. Cold and windy in the central division, but in other parts like the west, it has been hot and humid. Director for Nandraki Weather, Neville Poop, says the current cold conditions has been prolonged. He adds that the weather is not only for Fiji, but the region as well. Uh, Tonga is experiencing weather much like us, quite cool, uh, quite dry, uh, Vanuatu also, um, but further north, as I mentioned, up towards Tuvalu and Kiribati and Samoa and, and uh, Tokelau, they're quite warm. Coop adds that the current cold conditions experienced around the country is also determined by the ocean temperatures. We have changing sea, sea temperature patterns around us associated with the El Nino 
and we're also seeing a predominance of winds coming from the south, uh, which is bringing cool air from towards New Zealand up over us. It's been very cold sleeping at night, and uh, even in the day, you have to wear jackets at school. But I find that uh, the weather for the last uh, few months, it's been very cold. You know, most especially you can tell the wind coming from the sea, and it's really cold. The cold weather is expected to clear up by August or by latest September. But until then, expect colder days and nights. Ellen Stalls, FBC News. The Parliamentary Standing Committee on Justice, Law and Human Rights has wrapped up the public consultations on the Employment Relations Promulgation Amendments Bill. Committee Chairman Ashneel Sudhakar says one of the tasks in drafting their report is how best to resolve the impasse between the trade unions and the employers. Maggie Boyle tells us more. A generic... A total of 10 oral and two written submissions were made to the Parliamentary Standing Committee on Justice, Law and Human Rights. Committee Chairman Ashneel Sudhakar says public consultations have been very frank and some issues were constant in the majority of submissions. The uh, um, Essential National Industries Decree, which the uh, bill seeks to uh, repeal, and some of those provisions have been brought in um, in, the, in the amendment bill, uh, section 105 onwards, and uh, major contention by the unions were on those, uh, which the committee is considering. Sudaka adds a clear contention exists between the unions and the employers on what should be strike regulations. Uh, that includes both uh, essential and non-essential industry employees. Uh, they have been, uh, from the unions naturally, they have been a push or uh, an argument that uh, right to strike should be made easier, whereas the employers obviously, the Employers Federation, the uh, FEJ, etc., uh, of, the, of the opinion that uh, rights to strike, while, while it is a right, should be used, should not be used in a way that actually paralyzes the, the industry and the economy. The committee is expected to finalize its draft report by the end of next week to be tabled in Parliament in July. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. The Ministry of Finance says it has taken a number of measures on board to tackle issues raised by the Public Accounts Committee on the Auditor General's reports from 2009 to 2000, sorry, 2007 to 2009. Ministry officials explained to the committee that the measures include raising awareness on financial compliance to the whole of government and the establishment of a monitoring unit to oversee all capital projects. Committee Chairman Dr. Biman Prasad says this is expected to effectively limit the recurrent issues in the future. The Ministry of Finance uh, has uh, provided a very good uh, response to all the um, 29 systemic issues uh, that we identified in the report and they have also uh, looked at all the recommendations that we made and um, it's very pleasing to note that uh, Many of those systemic issues are being addressed. Prasad says the committee, Public Accounts Committee will now work on the 2010, 2011 and 2012 Auditor General reports with another consolidated report on their findings expected by the end of the year. The Itaokei Lands Trust Board has revealed that they cannot immediately implement equal distribution of land lease money because of logistical arrangements that need to be sorted out. TLTB General Manager Tevita Kurvakandua made the comment during the Parliamentary Standing Committee meeting on economic affairs. He was speaking in relation to a petition put forward to review the current distribution of lease money to individual landowners. Ali Kimbia has more. The Itoke Land Trust Board has come out to explain the cause of the delay of the equal distribution of lease money to landowners. In order for TLTB to distribute uh, lease monies equally to all the owners, we would require an updated register of Itoke land owners uh, that are registered in its uh, native lands register for the whole encounter. Uh, not only that, we would require that register to be also updated. TLTB confirms that the policy of equal distribution started last month and there have been a major shift from 4,500 distribution units to 300,000 individual landowner accounts. When government uh, introduced this uh, new policy, uh, we had to look at a much more robust and uh, robust uh, IT system that would capture 300,000 E2K uh, bank accounts. 
So that, that is another reason why it has taken us a bit of time uh, to actually implement this uh, policy in the food. The decision for equal distribution of lease money was introduced by government with the amendment of the Native Land Leases and Licenses Regulations 2010. This was to be effective from 1st January 2011. Ali FBC News. Coming up, new shipping fares and freight rates finalized. You just joined us on the system after dark. This is a homegrown number, courtesy of E3 and Cracker. Bula, how's it going? I'm D, your host on the system after dark, right here on Today FM. Today is hit music. You can catch me weeknights at 7 p.m. That's from Monday to Friday, only on the home of today's hit music. And don't forget, that's D with you every weeknight on the system after dark. The Fiji Commerce Commission has finalized the new shipping fares and freight rates, which will come into effect from the 1st of July. In 2012, the Cabinet had agreed to review the current structure, which the Commission had to undertake. Shireen Lata reports. Commission Chief Executive Bobby Maharaj says the fares and freight charges are under price control and all operators are required to use and maintain the standard rates for all cargoes from next week. Of the economical routes, uh, the passenger fares has been lowered slightly, whereas for the uneconomical routes, uh, what has happened is that uh, the fares uh, generally have gone up, but uh, what the Ministry of Transport has done through the budgetary allocation by the government for the subsidies to be given to these uneconomical routes, they have now taken ownership of subsidizing these routes. So in terms of the amount that has to be paid by the consumers for the economical routes has not changed by, by, by fine large. The step was taken as there was no proper fare structure for government vessels and private shipping companies initially. Maharaj says the new passenger fares will not remain fixed and some changes can be expected due to economic situations in the future. For the offense of overcharging, uh, the penalties uh, prescribed under the Commerce Commission Deal 2010 is a sport fine of $100 to $1,000 for a natural person, I mean to say a person or a business not registered as a company, and ranging from $100 to $3,000 for a company. For all the new routes that may evolve in future, the shipping companies are to make submissions to the Commission for the authorization of the passenger fares and freight rates before implementation. Sharin Lata, FBC News. The Lautoka branch of the Fiji Taxi Association supports the recommendation that passengers can hire taxis of any base from any location. They've called an emergency meeting in Nandi tomorrow to discuss the issue. The recommendation for the new system was made in the report on the land transport industry given to the Attorney General last week. President Mohamed Shamim says that, it, that any base concept has been in the pipeline for some time now and they recommend further public consultations just in hand and then they have to look at it how it works at the moment the association is not saying yes or no to it but the concept is on the way after doing public consultation is also important i think it is very important for the general public to give their emphasis on the issue fiji taxi association general secretary rishi ram says except for lautoka other branches are not in favor of the proposal Corporal Sefaniya Sukhanaivalu, Fiji's first recipient of the Victoria Cross, was today honoured by the Fiji military forces with the unveiling of a lifelike statue at the Queen Elizabeth Barracks in Suva. This was part of the Infantry Day celebrations to remember Sukhanaivalu's heroism during World War II in the Solomon Islands. Watisoni Raikandroka with the story. In memoriam and honour of Corporal Sefaniya Sukhanaivalu, this lifelike sculpture was made by retired Sergeant Major Rea Sindamu of the RFMF Engineering Corps. This year we've erected a, uh, a statue of uh, Corporal Sefania Sukanival, which was uh, sculptured by a Warren officer who had retired, who's now 75 years old. Uh, I had uh, first seen the statue some 15 years ago, so I brought up the idea with the uh, commander RFMF 
of uh, uh, erecting it somewhere. So we had directed that we erected it uh, where we have it today. Gileo says the statue's unveiling was a fitting on the occasion of the Infantry Day and an ideal opportunity to honor a great soldier. Infantry Day is celebrated each year to recognize the roles and sacrifices of the infantrymen or foot soldiers. As a daily reminder uh, to members of the RFMF uh, of the ultimate sacrifice that a junior non-commissioned officer heroically did by sacrificing his life uh, for his other comrades. So that is the biggest inspiration uh, we can draw uh, from uh, Corporal uh, Sefania Sukanevalu. Gileo says it is the army's hope that Sukanevalu's legacy will not only inspire the troops of today, but for many more in the years to come, as a reminder of the sacrifice and bravery in the face of war. What is on the Rikon Roka, FBC News. Foreign Minister Ratu Inoke Kumbombola has reiterated Fiji's unwavering support of the Melanesian Spearhead Group at the Foreign Minister's meeting in Solomon Islands. Kumbombola highlighted Fiji's support towards the finalization of the Humanitarian and Emergency Response Coordination Center to improve collaboration, particularly in light of the destruction caused by Cyclone Pam. On the ongoing debate of West Papua, Kumbombola says a firm decision on their membership application is expected to be made following frank discussions by the leaders on the matter. Prime Minister Vurenge Mbaini Marama will attend the MSG Leaders' Summit in Honiara. The MSG Leaders' Summit will include the Prime Ministers of Papua New Guinea and Solomon Islands. It's uncertain if Vanuatu's PM will attend. For the first time in the country's history, FBC TV's local show Chechemon will be hosting the highest fashion flight on Thursday. The fashion show coincides with Fiji Airways' inaugural direct flight from Nandi to Wellington. Two models have been selected to showcase pieces by local designers. A total of six designers have released their line of clothes for the fashion flight. There is also a prize for the best dressed passenger. Because it's going to be the first fashion flight. It's being promoted as Fiji's first fashion flight. It will um, fly to Wellington, New Zealand. And not only, it is the, not only will it be the first for Fiji and the South Pacific, but it's going to be the world's highest um, fashion flight. It's going to be the world's highest catwalk show. The fashion flight on Fiji Airways will officially launch the Project Chechemon Fashion Awards that will be held in Suva on July 4th. And on that note, it's sports time now. Here's Jamie with the very latest. And good evening. Up ahead, Fiji Wonderboy Roy Krishna arrives ahead of Wellington Phoenix and a record number of Western teams to compete at Mbola FM Maras Volleyball Tournament. We'll have this and more coming up. Gold FM, only the classic hits, beautiful song from the group Firehouse and When I Look Into Your Eyes. Before that, you heard from Smokey Robinson with One Hot Beat. We'll take a short break and join us in the next hour for more music from Seal. Bula I'm DJ Tora. Join me every weekdays, 7 until midnight, on the premium classics. Right here on Gold FM, only the classic hits. Fijian football wonder boy Roy Krishna arrived in the country today. In a twist of roles, Krishna, who is contracted to the Wellington Phoenix, will feature for the Fijian senior team in two matches against his club. The 28-year-old from Lombasa says he's looking forward to don the national jersey and to play against his club teammates. Uh, it's, um, it's our preseason, so you know we still a lot to be done in this uh, preseason. You know, we need to work hard, get our fitness back, but. You know, it's a challenge and uh, hopefully the boys in camp is looking forward for the game because it's, it's a big opportunity for them as well to prove uh, to the coaches that uh, they can also play in professional levels and hopefully some of them can get a contract. Fiji football coach Carlos Buzetti says the senior Vodafone Fiji football side has a good opportunity to showcase its skills when it takes on the Wellington Phoenix. The senior side as well as the under-23s marched into camp in Bar yesterday ahead of its first game on Saturday. Josephine Navula reports. With only three days remaining for the big match, the national squad is in the process of putting final touches to its game plan. 
we just go there and only to play a game. We go there to the players need to show how much they, they improve and the standard from the last game we played together. And for us, it's a, it's a good opportunity to play against a professional team because they are professional. The team has not been able to have an ideal preparations for the players together since they were committed to their districts. However, Buseri says this will be a chance for the players to showcase their talents and see where they stand compared to international teams. Good opportunity, great opportunity to play, great opportunity for the players to show Wellington Phoenix how good they are and you never know if we can find another Roy Krishna that they're becoming professional. So. Buseri adds he will give all the players in the squad the opportunity to play against the Knicks. We only have about three goalkeepers here and 18 players, so it's, it's, it's I know, a big, big squad. Um, we don't want a big squad, otherwise many players will miss. So just to bring players for, to sit on the bench only, no. We, but the players are here, everybody is capable to, to play a good game. The first game is on Saturday at the ANZ Stadium in Suva at 5.30 p.m., before which the Phoenix Premier side plays the national under-23 team at 2.30 p.m. The return matches will be played on Tuesday next week at Govin Park in Bar. Josephine Novula, FBC Sports. Vodafone Fiji 7's coach Ben Ryan will return to Fiji before the Pacific Games extended squad moves into camp next Tuesday. Ryan has a tough task awaiting him with a, nine, with a strong 19-member preparation squad already announced. Seasonal players included in the squad include Osea Kolini Sao, Pio Tuwai, Jeri Tuwai, Sabna Darawada and Aisake Katonimbao. These players are expected to lead Fiji's brigade at the Pacific Games. Fiji last one goal at the Pacific Games in 2007. The good news doesn't seem to stop for the Fiji Pearls. Sports World today announced its five-year sponsorship deal with the national team valued at $6,000 annually. Rahit Deo reports. <laughs> If there is any sport in the country which doesn't lack sponsorship, it has to be netball. With so many organizations already showing their support, Sports World is the latest one to join in. We at Sports World, um, I mean, very much proud to be associated with Netball Fiji. And, we'd, and we would like to thank Netball Fiji for having a confidence in our brands and the products and services that we, that we supply. Sports World will provide Fiji Netball with Gilbert brand official training and match balls to increase their performance levels. In a separate deal, Essex footwear valued at $395 each will be provided to the girls to be worn at the Pacific Games, the Test Match against the Silver Ferns and the Netball World Cup in Sydney. Netball Fiji appreciates the quality deal. Both Gilbert and Essex are, are quality netball brands. Gilbert, of course, uh, will be using Gilbert balls at uh, the Netball World Cup and, of course, the Pacific Games and the Test against the Silver Ferns and, of course, Essex. Anyone who is a top netballer wears A6. The deal wouldn't have come at a better time with the Pearls having a busy lineup of games ahead which starts with the Pacific Games next month. The Pearls leave for Papua New Guinea on the 11th of next month. The netball competition at the Pacific Games is starting two days later. Rohit Deo, NBC Sports. For the first time in its history, 17 teams from the West will take part in the 8th Mula FM Morris Volleyball Tournament this week. The organizing committee says this shows the improvement and development of volleyball in the West. A total of 32 men's and 16 women's teams will take part in the two-day tournament. We can see that uh, the, the, the volleyball is growing very fast and it's been developing very fast in the West. You know, uh, I'd like to acknowledge uh, those, uh, those officials from the West that have been doing the development works in the West you know, and bringing them over to, to, to bigger competitions uh, such as the Itambul FM to volleyball tournament. The tournament will be held this Friday and Saturday at the FMF Gymnasium in Suva. That's it from Sports Tonight. Good evening. The current head of Air Mauritius, Andre Filion, has been appointed as the new Chief Executive and Managing Director of Fiji Airways. Fiji Airways Chair Nalin Patel says Filion has 33 years of experience in the airline and tourism industries. 
Patel says as chief executive of Air Mauritius, Villion transformed the airline and restored its profitability. Public Enterprises Minister Ayasad Kayum in welcoming Villion said he is delighted that Fiji Airways has been able to attract yet another outstanding international airline executive to head the national carrier. Villion expressed his excitement about Fiji Airways, saying he will continue to build on its strong brand and lead its dedicated team to greater heights. He will take up the position before the 1st of October. Cloudy and rainy conditions were experienced over the group today. A trough of low pressure with associated cloud and showers lies over the group. It is gradually moving eastwards and is expected to affect the group till later tonight. 26 was the maximum temperature recorded in Suva, Nandi, Lautoka and Ba today. Savo Savo and Lombasa recorded 27 and 29 degrees respectively. Occasional showers over most places, isolated heavy falls expected, showers easing and clearing from the west, moderate easterly winds, winds turning and becoming predominantly southeasterly tomorrow. An outlook for Thursday, fine apart from brief showers over the southern and the interior of the larger islands, cool at night. And the main points again, major concerns have been raised as 800 communities in Fiji are now being affected by climate change disaster. TLTB has clarified issues surrounding lease money and reasons for delay in payments. And football star Roy Krishna has joined the national squad for the matches against the Wellington Phoenix. To our poll question for this week, we're asking, are you satisfied with the services provided by municipal councils? Visit our FBC website to take part. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email, citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj, or share it with us via Facebook page, FBC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news, or simply hashtag FBC News. You've been watching FBC News. I'm Jackie Spate. Good night. घर संसार में आपका स्वागत है आपका अपना छोटा सा स्वर जहाँ प्यार भरे रिश्ते पलते हैं जहाँ हेल्थी रहने की सलाह दी जाती है जहाँ हम आपको और भी सुंदर बनाते हैं और जहाँ स्वाद की सौगात भी है नमस्कार मैं हूँ पल्लवी सोमवार से शुक्रवार 9 से 12 तक रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धड़कन पर घर संसार में शामिल रहिए मेरे साथ ऐसा सुंदर सपना अपना